Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. In the next series of videos, we're going to be tackling the camshaft. We're going to be taking this piece of drill rod and reducing it to one of the most challenging parts in our engine build. In the first part, we will create our camshaft blank, which will have all of the features on the camshaft with the exception of cutting the lobes themselves. In the next video, we'll make the lathe fixture required to cut those lobes, and maybe if we have time to even cut them. In the final installment of the camshaft series, we will cut the lobes using a CNC machine. The drawing for the camshaft is available free on my website, link below. It's located in the camshaft assembly zip file. Link to my Patreon page can also be found below. All right, well, let's get started. And today, let's make the camshaft blank. So what is a camshaft real quickly? This here is the camshaft assembly in the Wallaby 30cc engine. It consists of a spur gear on the front, which allows us to turn the camshaft at half the speed of the crankshaft. And as its name implies, it has four cam lobes, two for the intake valves and two for the exhaust valves. The camshaft rides on bearings that sit in these two bearing holders. This first bearing holder we've already fabricated. The rear one we'll be working on a little later. Let's take a close-up look at the camshaft itself. So here's the camshaft. This is the front down here, the threaded end. The gear will fit on here. I have it oriented like this because I'm going to start machining from this end. I'm going to add a little bit of extra material here so I can grip it in my fixture, like so. I'm going to add about a half inch here. And then I'm going to thread the end to accept a 1032 screw. I'm going to put my pointer here so I can indicate the position of the camshaft in my machining fixture. There is an oil hole that goes down through the middle, and then there's a holes drilled in each of the lobes that intersect this oil gallery that deliver pressurized oil to each cam lobe for lubrication. All right, let's go to the machine shop, make some chips. I'm going to cut the bearing surface first. It needs to be a tight fit with the bearing. And if I overshoot and make it too loose, I can always cut it off and try again. And once I'm happy with the bearing surface, I'll drill the oil gallery down the middle of the camshaft. Then we face off the end. Remove most of the material for our bearing surface in a roughing operation. Then I make a finishing pass followed with a spring pass. This gives us a representative smooth surface. We take the micrometer, measure this, enter the value into the DRO, and now our diameter measurements are dialed in and we're ready to machine the bearing surface. Now remember, this will get cut off and this here is the actual bearing surface. So we can practice fit our bearing on this end. We don't always have this luxury. This is the most anxious moment as we get close to our dimension. Maybe just a little bit of filing or cleaning up with a Scotch-Brite would bring us to our desired diameter. Okay, our first critical dimension is done. I'm happy with the diameter for mounting our bearing. I don't want to push it all the way against the shoulder right now because I'm afraid I might not be able to get back off. The next operation is straightforward and I'm not going to dwell on it too long. We need to drill a hole down the middle of the shaft. Just take little nibbles, clear the chips often, and shouldn't have any problem. Okay, so we've machined this bearing surface here. We've added this extra material here and we have this stop. So now we'll work from this point to the first lobe. That right there is a quarter of an inch, and it's this is the diameter we're gonna shoot for. We could also machine out this area here. Then we'll extend the rod out and continue working down. Next, we'll turn down to the diameter of the bearing stop, or the shoulder that the bearing rests against. As we've done before, we rough the material down and then take some finishing passes and then turn to the final diameter.
I'll deburr the outside corner of our first lobe and then deburr the bearing shoulder. That finished up nice. Now I'll use a parting tool to remove the material between the bearing stop and our first lobe. Great, now we'll extend our workpiece out, use some red die kim, and then mark the edges of each lobe. This is a sanity check. We'll use the DRO to actually do the machining, but it's always nice to have a reference mark to give us that sense of, well, measure twice, cut once. My plan is to use the parting tool to clearly mark the areas between the lobes. The parting tool is not the best choice to remove material quickly. For that I use a carbide tip, but the parting tool gives me a nice flat edge for each lobe and I will use it to do the finishing passes. We're roughing out the material, making sure we stay clear of our lobes and also clear of our final diameter. It's fine to put on our roughing hat and remove the material quickly, but we don't want to cut into the camshaft hiding within. When using a parting tool in the DRO, it's important to remember which side of the parting tool we're using as our reference point. On one edge of the lobe, we'll use the zero point. On the next lobe over, we have to subtract out the thickness of the parting tool. And that finishes the cam lobes for our camshaft blank. But before we pull the workpiece out further, I'm going to center drill the end of the camshaft for a live center. I probably should have done all of the camshaft lobes using the live center, but better late than never. So we've machined the four lobes on our camshaft. Now we need to machine the front end. I think my strategy is going to be to come down here, rough this out to 0.4 then come in here, machine this to 246, drop back to here, machine this to 313, and then come back and finish this bearing surface, making this bearing surface match the other, the first bearing surface. We don't have access th to this to get a bearing on here, so we're gonna have to use our micrometer and hit the number that we did back here. Then, the last thing we'll do is we'll come in and cut our taper here. Looks like there's a little sliver we want to leave in here, so we'll use some die kim to mark that and make sure we leave that clear. That'll tell us that we get this side correct. All right, over to the lathe. Here's our setup for machining the front part of the camshaft. I put a live center in the back. I probably should have had a live center in for when I machined this area in here. Okay, so the first order of business then will be to rough this end down from about here to here to 0.4. Everything underneath here is less than 0.4 inches, so we'll rough, we'll do that first. Carbide works best, that is it gives the best finish. When you take a relatively aggressive cut, I'm using oil to keep the material cool. You can tell it's doing its job because the chips coming off are not discolored. As before, I finish up with a small cut and then a spring cut. Take my measurement to verify my DRO is still in calibration. I load up my parting tool so I get that nice sharp edge against the bearing stop. I touch off against the first bearing surface we did and initialize my diameter on the DRO. This gets us in the ballpark. Then I follow through with our plan and cut the three diameters on the front of our camshaft. Cool. So here, of course, is our four cam lobes. The bearing surface is here, the front bearing surface, with our stop. This will become the taper here, and this is, this will be threaded, quarter 28. So now it's time to load the uh, compound and make this taper here. That makes it really easy to see the progress we're making cutting our taper. We follow the same process, cutting the taper, securing the camshaft sprue gear, as we used on our flywheel and the flywheel split collar. You can refer back to the flywheel video for more detail. The compound angle has been set to 5 degrees, which will give us our 10 degree included angle on our taper. 
The carriage never moves. All of the cutting action is done with the compound handle, and then we will advance the cross slide for each cut. If we've set our compound angle correctly, we should have the small band of die kim at the large end of the taper, and then remove the die kim right down to the diameter of the threaded portion. And this looks really good. This is what we were shooting for. Now we're ready to part our camshaft off and turn it around in the lathe. We can use a 5 8 inch collet and clamp down on the outside diameter of our camshaft lobes. It's a moment of truth test fitting our bearing. Looks good here. I use a die to cut the quarter 28 thread, turning around the die for a second pass to bring my threads all the way up to the taper. And that completes the operations for our camshaft blank. I'm pleased with the outcome. Well, there we have it. We have our camshaft blank for our Wallaby 30cc engine. That wasn't so bad, was it? It was a bit challenging. We had to hit some very accurate dimensions radially and they had to place them actually, of course, in the right place. We had a taper we had to cut. We had some threading, outside threading, and some inside threading. But all in all, a very doable part. I think you should get some 5 8 inch drill rod and challenge yourself and try to make this part yourself. Because if you can make this part, if you can make the camshaft, you can make the whole engine. <laughs> and you can certainly make this part. We're going to cut the lobes next time, and that's very straightforward. It's just an uh, off-center eccentric cut. We have a little fixture that, does, that helps us do this. Challenge yourself. Make one and send me some pictures. I really get a kick out of seeing them. All right. Well, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Until next time, take care.